Hey guys. Okay, so really quick, can someone tell me, is the camera too far away or is it okay? I almost want to say that it's a little too high. Hi there. I think I might need to lower the camera just a little bit, but you guys let me know. What do you think? Hi. Okay, so hi Debbie. Um, hi Robbie. So um, do you guys think that I need to lower the camera a bit? Hey there. <laughs> I can't tell if I need to or not. It's fine. Okay, if, if at some point you guys think that I need to um, lower it, um, you know, let me see if I can do it. I'm afraid that my whole setup is going to come crashing down if I... <laughs> now, hold on. Let me do the other side really quickly. Okay, how's that? I think that might be a little bit better. Yeah, that's better. Hi there. I could try a little bit more. I just don't want to make anybody sick with the, uh, the whole motion thing going on. Okay, there we go. So heard about that. Okay, so what time is it? Sorry about that. It's four minutes late. Okay, so tonight we're going to be making three projects. This is my online workshop. So I did one uh, last month and thank you guys. It was an amazing success and everyone loved the project. So I'm going to try to pull one off every month. Um, so this is this month's and we're making... This is card number one, and this is card number two, and then this is the cute little box that we're making. Um, once the live video is over, I will have all the details, or I'll post all the details. I'm going to load the video and the instruction sheet and all the details on my website, so it might take me anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour to get the video transferred and everything over there. But there is an order and incentive, and you're going to get the kit to make all the projects. And there, it's a tiered um, incentive. So option number one is if you place a $50 order using this hostess code, uh, you're going to get a packet to make one of each of the projects. If you place a $75 order, you're going to get a packet to make two, and then also a pack of the metallic uh, enamel shapes, because this is not included in the packet although we are using them on all three projects. Um, the cost on those are a little bit more than I could afford to include with the $50 offering. And then there's an option to purchase the, the make and take packet. But like I said, I won't go over this again. It's just all going to be over on my website. So I'm going to show you the actual kits. So you're going to get six sheets of the Be Merry Designer Series paper. You will be cutting those yourself, but I'm going to show you how to cut them uh, when we make the projects. So then here is the kit to make card number one. You're going to get uh, two of each card. And then here's card two. You're going to make two of those cards. It does come with envelopes as well. And then here's the bonus or the 3D project. And you'll only be making one of those. Okay, so... This, this is what everyone's getting, minus the metallic shapes. This is for the 75 and up. I'm only making one project on the video, so I've got this packet ready for me, because we're just gonna make one. So I'm gonna show you how to cut the paper. We're gonna start with card number one, and I will stop after um, each project and look for questions, because this video will be a little bit longer tonight, since we're making three projects. But I think I got myself all organized, so we should be we should be able to move pretty quickly. Okay, card one, garden green, eight and a half by five and a half, whisper white, 
five and a quarter by four. And hold on, let me get my instruction sheet because now all of a sudden I do not remember the measurements. Let's see, supply list, here's card one. Okay, so cherry cobbler is three by four. And then we've got um, another piece of Whisper White that's two by two and three quarters. That's this one right here. I gave myself two just in case I mess up. And then the Designer Series paper, because your kit, you're going to be able to make two of this card. You want to make sure that you cut the paper properly so that you can get two. So let me get that out. This is um, a card that I designed for a swap that I was in and I tried to get as much as I could out of one sheet of paper. So we're gonna cut this at two and seven eighths. So that's gonna give us two strips that measure two and seven eighths. And then we're gonna cut it at three and seven eighths. Now you could cut it at three and seven eighths first, but that sometimes is, sometimes is confusing for people. So if you're conservative and you wanna start sideways and cut it three and seven eighths, you can, but I know that a lot of people are like me and they get confused, so I'm just going to cut at the two and seven eighths. Okay, two and seven eighths, and then two and seven eighths, and then three and seven eighths. So this is scraps. You can use that on another card. And same thing, three and seven eighths. That scrap you can use on another card. I'm going to put this back in here because I want to show you what the kit's going to have left over once you've cut for all of your projects. You know, I'm going to go ahead and use this to score my card too. Um, four and a quarter is where we're going to score it. And let me grab my um, stylus. My blade is dull. <laughs> oh, I see hearts. Yay. I love it. Okay, now this Whisper White layer is going to go inside. Just going to get my snail. Hey there. I see the highs. <laughs> okay, then now I'm going to take this, and I like to just say you're just going to add it cattywampus. I mean, that's that's the best way to say it. I guess you could say add it crooked or cattywampus. And then this is going to go on just like that. There's no right or wrong way. You just don't want it to um, go off the edges of the card. And I'm going to put this back in here because this is for our second card that we are not making. And now I'm going to get my stamps. We're using Watts of Occasion. So that's what this online workshop is called is Watts of, Occ Watts of Occasions. I love it. You guys have already seen me use Thanks a Watts. Uh, that that was last Friday. Yeah, so we're using the tree image here and then at home with you Had the most perfect Merry Christmas for me at the moment before our holiday catalog comes out So if you guys have um, a different Merry Christmas, you're welcome to use that That's just the one that I'm using because it's small if you have teeny tiny wishes you could use that um, okay, so I'm using Cherry Cobbler ink, and I'm going to stop talking so I don't mess up. Not too bad. I could have stamped it a little lower, but we'll call it good. And then now, Garden Green. And let's see. Okay, it looks like it's inked well. I think I smudged it a little. That's okay. It's just my sample. And then I'm going to turn this over and add dimensionals to the back. 
I'm looking for my regular dimensions. It looks like all I have on my desk right here are minis. Oh, I found some behind me. Okay, come back over here. Oh dear, I really smudged that one. Oh well. I'll peel this thing off later and fix it. And then I'm going to add, let's go ahead and get these out and leave them out since I'm using them on all three projects. Okay, so there's card one. Lickety split. Just ignore the smudge. Okay, now, <laughs> yay, that's the, that's the benefit. The holiday catalog is going to go live um, September 1st. Yeah, and it, um, what was I going to say? And as a demonstrator, we can pre-order in August. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Thank you. Okay, the next card, let me reach over here and get this, is this one. And I need to clean my Merry Christmas image really quick. I've just got some baby wipes here. Because this time we're going to stamp it in um, garden green. I'm going to, this is my baby wipe bowl. <laughs> um, okay, let me get the supplies for this one. Move this out of the way. And let me get the instruction sheet. Have I seen any of it? Um, Dolores, no, because I didn't go on the incentive trip. So that that's the part. Like, I'm not upset that I didn't go to Thailand. I'm just upset that I didn't get the pillow gifts or the holiday catalog so these ink colors are actually in our annual catalog yeah and I said I was gonna look for questions after that first card so yeah the holiday catalog goes live on September 1st and as a demonstrator we can uh, start ordering on August 1st I'm still looking for questions Nope, I don't think you missed you missed anything. Okay, so moving on to card number two. My vision just got blurry, so the base of the card is garden green. I've never really used this color as much as I have this week. Um, so eight and a half by five and a half, and then whisper white for the inside, five and a quarter by four, and then this white layer right here, what does it measure? three and a half by four and three quarters, and then two and three quarters by two and three quarters for um, that. And then garden green, three, three by three. The kit will include the scallop circle already. And then I've got a scrap for the Merry Christmas right here. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to cut the designer series paper before we go any further. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and get the trimmer again. This time you're going to be using this pattern, okay? Now, you, this is my most favorite. So if you guys are on my mailing list, you got the Christmas card yesterday. You saw the Christmas card that I um, sent as, my, as your exclusive project. I love that card. I, it might be my Christmas card this year. Okay, so how to cut this. What you want is you want it to be, so I, these to me look like Christmas trees. I kind of felt like they did. In my mind, they do. So put the star at the top, which that is a star. I'm pretty sure that's a tree. Okay, so turn it so that the top of the tree is to the left, and then you're going to cut this at four and a half. 
Is that right? Yeah, okay. So four and a half. This is extra. And then you're gonna cut this at three. And by cutting it at three now, that's gonna give you both of these. So this is for card your second card, because you're making two of each card, okay? I'm not making the second one on camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in the bag so that I don't do anything with it. Now we're gonna take this piece and we're gonna cut it to measure one inch. And that's gonna give us three pieces that measure one inch. So one, okay, there's all three pieces and they all line up. While I've got the trimmer, let's go ahead and score the base of the card at four and a quarter. Fold this over. Hi there. Okay, there's that. Now, let's go ahead and add. Let's see, this is this piece. Where's our inside layer? Here it is. Five and a quarter by four. Now, this one's going to go right here on top, but I want to add these strips first. And I'm going to start um, on the left side over here, and I'm going to space them apart equally. Which, don't be afraid, it's actually not hard. Of course, I say that, and then <laughs> let me say a little prayer really quick that I don't mess up. One more. Voila, isn't that cute? Okay, now we'll turn it over. I use the uh, the wider tip. In fact, I rarely use that, that little one. Always the wider. The thin one, the little one sometimes rips my stuff. I have a heavy hand. <laughs> okay, so there's the front of our card. Now, we're going to stamp. That ink pad is really wet. That's what's making me um, smudge it. I re-inked it and um, whew, let's give that a second to dry and then we'll go ahead and stamp the greeting. While both of those are drying, <laughs> Where's my ribbon? Okay, so in the kit, the ribbon is there, but I didn't cut it for my, um... here it is. So I'm doing the ribbon now while the ink is drying on the others. I probably need to make it a teeny tiny bit smaller. Okay, set that aside. And 
let's work with the greeting now. So what you're going to do is cut it out with the classic label punch. And then we're going to make it, oh, it still wasn't um, dry. We're going to use a post-it note. I'll come back here, punch. And then we're going to make it smaller. So post-it note. And then place it back in here. Just make sure that your ink is dry because I just smeared mine again. Something always has to happen, you know? Oh, come here. Isn't that cute? So it's a shorter classic label. Now let's get the big shot out. We're going to cut the this um, scallop circle measures two and three quarters and the stitch shaped square measures two and an eighth. So if you're using your framelits to cut them out, um, those are the measurements. And if you don't have them, then you can just cut a piece of cardstock that measures that. Okay, I'm going to get the big shot real quick. Mary, yes, you can buy it or you can earn it uh, free with an order. All the details will be posted on my website. Um, I say as soon as the video is over. It won't be as soon as it's over because what I want to do is load the video and all the details at the same time. So anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour and it'll be up. I have all the, the details posted, but I need to get the video done. Or you know the video this is the video but I need to get it posted over there so I'm gonna load it onto YouTube and now this one and I smeared this one too I should have left my ink pad open for an hour and let it um, and let it dry out a little I probably put too much ink on it you're welcome Oh, yay, hearts again. Okay, let me get this out of the way for a second. It's really quiet. I took Elvis up uh, to Brooke's room, um, and now it's like really, really quiet. <laughs> okay, we'll put the card back in the view here. And this is going to get attached just like that. So I'm going to turn it over and add my snail. Um, Rhonda, yes. What I do is I use a spoon. So I put drops or actually I cheat sometimes and use my bone folder. I don't know if you've ever noticed that some of my bone folders have ink on the bottom of them. And that's what I've done is I've used my bone folder to spread the ink around. I do have a plastic spoon in this room somewhere, but I always uh, seem to lose it. So a bone folder is usually on every desk in here. So, yeah. So what you want to do is you put the reinker drops in there, and then you spread it across the whole ink pad. I think I have a video on it. Okay. So we're going to add this. Did I get, no, that was fuzz. I was thinking I got ink on there. It's a good thing I already took pictures of my projects. Um, here's my glue dot. So we're going to, actually we're going to add the greeting first. And then the ribbon. Yeah, talk about humidity. What is it? I think the heat index today was like 110 here. I haven't left the house. I don't even think I went to check my mail yet because it's just too hot. Okay, I want to make sure that I'm not covering up. <laughs> okay, it looks a little, a little wonky. And then this time I'm using the silver star I thought the silver would look um, 
better with with the, all the white action going on monochromatic I should say there they are I love it okay now we're ready for the 3d project let me get all the supplies oh and I said I would ask or I would check for questions so let me check really quick for that as well oh yay I love it um, thank you the stamp set this stamp set that I'm using is in the annual catalog yeah it's available now yay yeah because I figure I couldn't do an online workshop and use something that wasn't available yet so yeah what's of occasion and last week I showed a thank you card using this one I really do love this set and I have a Christmas card ready for you guys I don't know if it's next week or the next that's using this Mary and Bright it fits in a one and a half inch uh, circle punch okay I think I already answered all the questions so now let me go over the supplies for the 3d project okay garden green well let me get all this out garden green that measures 11 by three and a quarter so if you were doing um, if you were make cutting this yourself you could get let's see three six you could get two of these out of one sheet of paper out of one sheet of garden green so 11 by three and a quarter and then the box inside here is five by three and three eighths yeah and then oh goodness gracious I even have ink on here um, so that looks really small I think I might need to recut that so this is supposed to be three by three this is supposed to be two and three quarters by two and three quarters and this is three by three the designer series paper measures three by four and a half so I'm going to show you how to cut that just like the other projects and this time we're using my favorite houndstooth I love this I always when every time I see houndstooth I always bring up that I used to have a houndstooth jacket and I loved it my husband hated it so I don't have it anymore but I loved it <laughs> okay so I'm gonna cut this at three inches by four and a half that thing would be really in style if I had kept it 26 years ago okay I'm going to put this back in here so if you wanted to decorate the back as you can see it does work okay now we're going to take the 11 by three and a quarter piece and we're going to score it at four and three quarters and six and a quarter oh and I don't have to open it because six and a quarter is right there I think I'm done with the trimmer The designer series paper is Be Merry, and it's also in the annual catalog. Everything I'm using is in the yeah in the annual catalog. It's available now. Um, okay, so now what we're gonna do is get the big shot before we go any further, and we're going to cut out the handle. Now we're gonna have to cut it out again and then again because we're going to cut it out and then we're going to add the designer series paper but our framers are really not designed to cut through multiple sheets of of paper or cardstock so i'm just going to do it the proper way so that i don't mess up my stuff so big shot i get it platform cutting pad okay where to put the oval here it is and I'm just going to place it right about there. I think it's centered. Now we 
have to do the other side. So, where's my snail? Did I put it in the drawer? Hm. It's under here. Okay, hold on. Let me show you. This is how I line it up. So, I just put a little teeny tiny drop of snail on there. And then I put this back there, okay? And then I place this over that. Well, and make sure that the amount of snail that you use is enough to actually hold it. Like you guys said, that stuff don't work real well in my house, especially with the humidity we have going on right now. Although I heard I can't really complain about the humidity compared to Thailand. <laughs> okay. Let's do this again. There we go. Okay, now let's add our designer series paper to the front. And then we're going to run it back through again. <laughs> I didn't go, Mary. Mm -mm. No way, Jose. When somebody tells me it's going to take a couple days to get to the destination, <laughs> nope. Okay, now we officially have it, which if you guys have the old um, oval punch that we used to sell, then that would work really quickly and easily, but we don't sell those anymore, so I'm using current product. Now, let me get, this is the garden green. This is how I determined my colors for this. Somebody asked me that, and I probably already answered this question, but the way that I determined what colors I was using for this was that we had this ribbon. Um, we had that cherry cobbler one, but one side has lines and the other side has X's. And it's difficult for some to get only one side to show, if you know what I mean. So I went with the garden green because it matched. It it worked. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I just butchered my explanation. Okay, so let me make this a little bit smaller. I love it. Oh, and you know what? I should have put my box in here, but that's okay. We're going to use liquid adhesive anyway, so we'll be fine. Okay. Oh, I need to trim this, but I want my nice scissors to trim. Beautiful. Okay, let's work on the little box now. So this one, you're going to score it at one inch on all four sides. do want my oh I agree it is to die for <laughs> okay I'm showing um, you guys remember me telling you about me spreading the ink around on my uh, in my ink pads this is where I've used cherry cobbler and yeah probably garden green I told y'all I re-inked it. Okay. I'm going to cut up to the score line on all four tabs. 
Hi, Bella. And now I'm just going to give these a teeny tiny trim. Okay. And then I think this step may not be necessary, but sometimes when I'm making these boxes, um, if I'm off by an eighth of an inch, it makes a huge difference. So that's why I did that. Okay. Let's hope I get this working. Yes, first one worked. Okay, there's our cute little box. You could make that higher if you wanted. I don't actually have those measurements with me at the moment, but you could. And then I'm just going to take some liquid glue. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going there today. <laughs> not on video camera. Not live, I should say. I like how the uh, liquid glue is, you know, you can move it around for a few minutes before it dries, but then once it dries, it's, um, it's stuck. It works fantastic. If you haven't ever used this glue, you should actually give it a try. Uh, I used to use it a lot when I used the, um, when I made projects using the coasters. It works fantastic. Um, okay, so now, where are we? We're ready to stamp. Isn't that so cute? Um, I need to clean this image again because now it has garden green ink on it. I mean, it has, what does it have on it? Okay, hold on. I need to write that this needs a scrap of white for the classic label punch. Luckily, I have lots of white here with me. Oh, it's upside down. I still smeared it. Oh, remind me to never re-ink my, re my ink pads the same day I'm going to film. Hold on, one more time. That one's better. Okay, now let's get this three by three white piece because that's what we're gonna cut this out with. Or that's the measurement, I should say. I can't talk now. I'm. A Did I get it? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Oh, wait. I Did I stamp that in the wrong color? Okay, rewind. That's why I kept messing up, because I was using the wrong color. We want cherry cobbler, which should stamp a whole lot better, because I didn't re-ink this one today. Okay, now... We'll give these time to dry, so I'm going to set them aside, and I'm going to go ahead and cut out the um, scallop squares. Well, that one just barely fits. Come here. <laughs> okay. Move this out of the way and get the big shot. it 
platform again, cutting pad. We'll do the garden green one first. The measurement that I have on the instructions is correct. I just didn't cut this the correct size. Okay, that worked. And then we'll cut out the cherry cobbler. And then we're going to cut out the uh, main image with the stitch shaped framelits. The same one, so I didn't use any any different size. All three, or did I? <laughs> now that I say that, I'm like, hmm. let me double check and make sure that this measures. Yep, so I used the same size on all three projects. Okay, I think we are done with the big shot. I want to make sure I don't lose my framelit, so I'm going to put those over there. Get all the layers back over here. Okay, now let's take the classic label punch again, and we're going to do the same thing that we did for, um, for the card that we made. We're going to cut it out, and then we're going to take a post-it note, and, well, let me put it at the top here, and we're going to cut it smaller. go. I almost trimmed that one almost too short, but it'll be fine. These are just my samples. Oh wait, wrong one. Here we go. See that just barely, it's kind of a tight fit, but it works. Just a little bit of cherry cobbler on the project, so that way we could use the cherry cobbler ink. Then we're going to attach it to the front. Did I attach it with dimensionals? Nope, just snail. And we're going to use the mini, notice my excitement, the uh, mini dimensionals for the greeting. What do I do with my samples? That is a good question. Sometimes I send them to my new downline, like my new recruits. Sometimes I give them to people, like I actually use them for um, people. Yeah. Um, and then a lot of times, I really, I really do try to send them to new downline, but a lot of times they end up in my box of samples. Um, yeah. Truthfully, I have a big box of samples. No, I mean, I really do. Like, when I have a yard sale or whatever, I will give them away, like, when people buy stuff. They're hard to ship, you know. Oh, I forgot the star. Come here, star. So the last step is to add the little metallic star. Okay, I'm going to get all three projects out again. So there's the, the little box, the 3D project. And then card number two. And card number one. Thank you. Yay. Um, and then 
the instruction sheet will be free for everyone to print right from my website. I've got to add the little um, diagram for the box. So I need to add one more page to the box. So it has all the measurements for all the projects and the supply list and everything. So that will be posted on my website tonight. Thank you. And like I said, all the details about the order and incentive will be on my website too. I just need about, um, let's just say an hour that will be safe. Uh, will I share sometime how I store without damage? I think I can actually, um, I can show you now, I think. I have, I have uh, plastic containers from the store. Let me grab one really quickly. So, for example, this is uh, Bella's Bundles, the, um, what was that, three months in here. So, they're all, yeah. <laughs> and I label the outside what's in there. So, for example, these would be labeled, and like my Christmas containers, I have three big Christmas containers, and all Christmas projects go in there. Uh, can I post the size of the stamped image? That is two and an eighth. Are you talking about the, the white square? That's two and an eighth. Yeah. So, yeah, this piece is uh, two and an eighth. Yes, Mary, I have decided I'm going to do one a quarter. So, as soon as the holiday catalog arrives in my house, I'm going to choose one bundle and I'm going to run with it. And we're going to all cross our fingers and pray that what I choose doesn't have any back orders or anything like that. And if it does, then we'll just, we'll deal with it. We'll accept it. So, yeah. I And I've missed doing it as well. Uh, but with, you know, Laura leaving and then the back orders and anyway. Yeah. So, I'm going to do one a quarter instead of one every month. Because, yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, let me look for questions. So, Sue, was that the measurement that you needed, the the um, the two and an eighth? I just want to make sure before I go on for other questions. Let's see. Uh, how much fuse do I go through? Yeah, you know, I actually don't go through that much, believe it or not. Okay, I don't think I actually see. Okay, so next month, August, I'm actually going to have a whole lot more um, holiday projects. I figure might as well. We've got some cute stamps. Um, I'm going to be using the Carols of Christmas a little bit more and then um, what's the one in the the other one I don't have it in front of me anyway I have a couple Christmas sets so yeah you want to know what the stamp what the oh goodness gracious what did I just do so the stamped image itself is uh, one and a quarter by one and seven eighths. Yeah, so that's the size of the image. I think Miss Bella. Hold on, let me let me see if I have. Well, I know where her stamp set is. Let me see if that would fit. Not that you'd want to use it for Christmas, but. Like, here's Miss Bella, one of the images. It's a tad, it's a tad bit too big. Well, you could probably make it work if you wanted to use a puppy. But that just gives you an example of, there'll be other images that will fit in there. 
How is my quilting? Yeah, Dolores, I had to take a break from it. Although I did go to a, a, a sew day last Saturday and I did an entire quilt top. I'll put it on my blog this week. Maybe this weekend. <laughs> um, okay. Any particular reason you don't cut more than one item at a time? Uh... Any particular reason you don't cut out more than one? I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure I understand the question. I'm sorry. Well, I'll be going through the holiday catalog. To, yes, absolutely. As soon as I, as soon as we can, which will be when it goes live in September. Yeah. I will always do that unless something's wrong with me. Um, the catalog tours are always really a fun time. Yeah, and I can't wait. Um, the 12 weeks of Halloween starts mid-August, but we only have um, this Halloween stamp set available, I think, in August. There might be another image somewhere. I've got to look back through the, um, the catalog, but I think this might be my only option, so I'm going to have to work some miracles for three weeks. Actually, Brooke said I could use that little ghost for a bunch of things and the little bat. And it does say trick or treat. Um, Shelly, okay, so what to put in these little boxes? Okay, I always put candy in there, but you could put um, little candles. You can also put lipstick in there, little, little uh, chapstick thingies. Actually, a little Swiss Army knife will fit in here, too. So, if, like, if you were making this for a dude, a little Swiss Army knife fits in there perfectly. Everybody gets the printed instructions for free. They're going to be posted on my website tonight. They're free for everyone. So, you just head over there. Just give me about an hour once the video ends, and then I'll have them, I'll, I'll have them posted there. Uh, do I find it hard to start holiday cards without the holiday catalog being available? No, because I mean, look, I made, I made these three projects day before yesterday, and I made three other Christmas cards that I'm going to show on my blog. Oh, wait, I, and I sent one in my newsletter yesterday. No, I don't find it hard. Not me. Not when it comes to holidays. I struggle, um, with everyday stuff not holiday stuff you could put tic tacs yeah um i was gonna say i have a box of tic tacs but my husband took them he he will take any candy that's not old in here i probably have an old pack somewhere but yeah in fact it's wait you could put two packs of tic tacs in here you could put an ornament but it would have to be a smaller ornament like, I'm going to get one of these little spiders. I still have these things on my, on my, on my window ledge. Like, he would fit in there. I kind of consider him, you know, um, an ornament. Isn't he so cute? What was that, like three years ago that I, I did a video making them? Yeah. I would just put a little bit of tissue paper in there. Would biscuits? You mean like uh, dog biscuits? Let me uh, grab some candy. That's a better. So this will give you an example of um, the size. So here's some tea bags. And that fits in there just like that, see? Or I have some little, okay, this expired in uh, <laughs> 2012. I told y'all never eat anything if you were to come in here because I have a whole big bowl full of old retired candy. And then little Ghirardelli's. You know, you could fit several of those in there. Little teddy bear will fit in there. Um, let me get my um, ruler, and I'll tell you the exact measurement. So, it's three inches. 
by one and a quarter and then it's one inch is one inch tall but you could make it you know one and a half inches tall but you probably wouldn't want to go much higher than one and a half yeah because then this part up here will not well it won't meet at the top very nicely Oh yeah, money. Money always works. So for Christmas for years, we always uh, would go to Walgreens and buy all the candy there. They, they have a fabulous selection of candy. And I always sent the nieces and nephews cash and candy. And every time I would go to Walgreens and, and buy the candy, they'd be like, whoa, that's a lot of candy. And I would always say, cash and candy. Who doesn't love cash and candy? They thought it was really cool. Yeah, biscuits equal cookies. You could put a cookie in there, but it would... Oh, goodness gracious. But, yeah, you could put a cookie in there. You'd have to put it in a little protective bag, you know. <laughs> okay, now, I'm going to look for questions, and then I'm going to uh, sign off. Let's see, two inch cookies. Let me get my ruler back out again. I just want to make sure I'm telling you the truth. Okay, well look, here is a roll of glue dots. And the glue dots measure two and a half inches. So we can pretend this is a biscuit. Mmm. It fits in there, see? Absolutely. <laughs> Y'all are laughing or crying? That's hilarious. Yeah, glue dots are, is a pretend biscuit. Okay. Or a pretend cookie. <laughs> uh, Georgia, there is a video on my website with the spider. Um, if you can't find it, let me know. But you should be able to type spider in the search box on my website and it will come right up. I can't actually take credit for creating it. Um, the ladies, when I held my retreat, they taught me how to make it. I was, it's, I was so obsessed. Yeah, I have another one here. Let me show you him. He's, well, I have two more. And I'm terrified of spiders. I don't even like them. But um, this one's gnarly. Yeah, I'm so terrified of them. But not these kind. They're cute. Okay, sorry. Lane swerved there. Let me look for more questions. <laughs> I still have the whole kit. All that stuff I bought to make them. Uh... Yeah, how does candy get old? <laughs> okay, I don't actually think I see any other uh, questions. Yeah, okay. So, that's it. I'm going to sign off now, and I will go finish the instruction sheet, get the video loaded on YouTube. And, um, yeah, y'all have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. Why the little sad faces? <laughs> oh, because I'm saying goodbye. <laughs> Good night. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Now if I can reach the stop button. Hold on. I don't I can't even see it. Okay. Don't I hope I don't make y'all sick by doing this. <laughs>